Music is magical. Just a few notes can elicit very strong emotional responses in us. But are there tunes which are really irresistible? Are there creatures who have mysterious musical powers? Today we're talking about supernatural musicians of Scandinavian folklore. Emily Valtgen here. In this video we're gonna learn about two creatures of the Scandinavian folklore which are related to playing music and musicians. Our first creature is called Necken in Swedish and Nöcken in Norwegian and it is a water spirit linked to lakes and rivers who tries to lure people into the water and drown them. It is a shapeshifter having two main forms. The first one is that of a beautiful horse. So beautiful actually that you cannot resist but climb onto its back. But once there you cannot go down and Necken just gallops to the water and drowns you. In this form Necken is also known in Swedish as Bäckahesten, so the river horse. And it is very close to the Brook horse of the legends from Great Britain. It is also in its horse form that Necken is known in the Faroe Islands as Nykur. The second form of Necken is that of a extremely beautiful young man. Very elegantly dressed according to all the tales, or naked according to a bit newer ones. And in this form Necken lures people to him by his playing, usually of a fiddle, sometimes also singing. His music is absolutely irresistible. In that human-ish form, Necken is known in Finland as Necki. This creature is mostly a malevolent one, as drowning is not really something pleasant, but it really depends on the tale. Sometimes Necken is just a very lonely spirit that just needs a bit of compassion and sometimes in horse form you can either trick it or tame it into becoming an actual horse and in human form there are some tales where Necken marries a human woman. The marriage is rarely a happy one though as Necken always longs to its river or lake and at some point usually goes back to the water. There is a funny modern tradition about Necken which is called Årets Neck, so Necken of the Year. And it's a little competition that happens in some river in Sweden where musicians go naked, they are only allowed to dress themselves with vegetation that they find on the spot, and play their instruments for a jury who will decide who is the closest to the spirit of Necken in the playing and possibly the costume. It's not a very well-known event, sadly, but it has actually even appeared on TV where a neck and dressed winner of that year's competition played a few beautiful tunes on his fiddle. I really love that this competition exists. My only pet peeve with it is that it's not open to women, apparently. I don't know if it's like in the rules that it's only for men, and yes, Necken is a male spirit, but, you know, I think it's a cool idea and I don't see why women couldn't participate. So I hope they either open the competition to women in coming years or that someone, maybe me, uh, starts a women version of it. Our second creature is the Fossegrim in Norwegian, or just sometimes called Grim, as Foss means a waterfall or a very fast rapid of a river with like little jumps <laughs> and in Swedish it is called Strömkallen so the stream guy pretty much. Very similar to Necken there are still some differences. Some people think that it's pretty much a version of Necken or like a subspecies or that it's just another creature. 
For me, as they have different names and slightly different legends and tales associated to them, I think about them as two different spirits, Necken, Fossegrim. And Fossegrim, as said, is a musician. He usually plays the fiddle. Actually, most often the Harlanger fiddle or Haringfelle. Sometimes also it's said that he plays the harp. And it's a bit more associated to fast rivers and waterfalls, especially not that much to lakes. And the music that the Fossegrim plays on its fiddle is super natural. It sounds like the wind, the forest, the trees and the water on the strings. And it has tunes that are magical. They can make everybody dance, including the people who don't want to. And even inanimated objects. Chairs, tables, mills, or actually even trees. What is especially interesting to us with the Fossegrim is that it is possible to learn to play music from him. To convince him to teach you, the tales are not all agreeing on how you should do exactly. Usually it includes some kind of goat or sheep uh, meat that you have to give to the place of the Fossegrim, so usually a waterfall following a very specific ritual, so like on the right day, in the right way, you have to walk backwards or this kind of things. If you are not generous with the meat and there is not enough of it, the Fossegrim will only teach you to tune the instrument. Considering that Harding Fellas are really hard to tune, I think it's not that bad of a deal, actually. But if you have been generous and the meat is enough, the Fossegrim will take your fingers and drag them across the strings until they bleed. And after that, you will be able to play so that everyone dances, including objects and trees. There are two well-known fiddlers said to have been taught by the Fossegrim. The first one is Müllerguten, of his real name Tarieri Augonsson, a 1800s fiddler from Telemark, who has been very, very important for that region's folk music. He has learned old tunes and old styles from other fiddlers, but then he has made them into his own thing. He was known to play especially virtuosic, with lots of ornaments, and he was one of the main influences of the style of playing variations to tunes, usually very ornamented and virtuosic variations. Despite his great talent as a musician, he was quite of a difficult person, apparently. He lived most of his life in poverty, trying to be a farmer, but not really managing. And he was really critical of other fiddlers, so although he was really appreciated by people who listened to him, he had difficulties establishing good contacts. And also towards the end of his life, he did not want to play anymore. He got tired of it somehow. But he managed to get a very nice friendship with Ole Bull, who is the second fiddler said to have been taught by the Fossegrim. Ole Bull was a Bergen-based violinist who got very interested in folk music and who became friend with Müller Goethe. Ole Bull has a statue to his name in Bergen city, and on the statue one of the elements playing under the water is the Fossegrim with a harp. I am really glad that the legends of Necken and Fossegrimmen have survived to this day and are still told. I find especially nice when myth and history combine, so I like that two real-life fiddlers are said to have some mystical mentor. And I especially enjoyed the fact that grown-ass men strip down, take their instruments and go play with some flowers in their hair in a river for getting some kind of recognition that is totally not official but just folkloric and fun. It's exactly the kind of both traditional and chaotic energy that I love about Sweden quite in particular. I hope you have also enjoyed hearing about these legends and stories. If it's the case, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, 
share the video with a friend who likes either mythology and myths and tales, or folk music, or both, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Actually, yesterday I finished my taxes for 2021, and it was quite heartbreaking to notice that in the gig and contracts for playing on stage section, it was zero. I am lucky to not have music as my main source of income anymore, but it's still hard to see that it was absolute zero for the whole year when just a few years ago I would make a living out of just my music. The only musical income I had for the past year was Patreon, so thank you very much to my patrons for their support. Never hesitate to wear flowers in your hair as often as you can, play some tunes with your local spirits, and stay tuned for more Scandi folk music adventures. Hey, Noah.